Our 3310 PhD drill um, has two different types of cylinders if it's equipped with mid row banders. It has an opener cylinder as well as a mid row bander cylinder. Uh, key difference is the way they're pressured up. We'll talk about that when we get over by the drill. A few tools you need to do the 3310 leak down test. You'll need a pair of pliers or side cutters to remove cutter keys. You'll need an 11 16 wrench as well as a three quarter inch wrench to remove the lines from the openers and mid row bander cylinders. You'll need a 15 16 wrench to remove the bottom bolt on the mid row banders cylinders as well as you'll need inch and an eighth, inch and a quarter, two inch and a quarters to do the valve bypass if required. As well as you'll need a temperature gun, infrared temperature gun, a hammer to remove seized pins, a punch as well as handy, and various fittings and hoses to bypass the valves if required. The 3310 PHD has one hydraulic cylinder for each seed opener and mid-row bander. An internal leak in any of these cylinders may contribute to openers failing to stay in the transport position when moving the unit or causing the openers to drop when parked. The following procedure is to help determine as quickly as possible if there is a cylinder with a leak and how to locate it. Danger. To prevent injury or death, never loosen any fittings on a hydraulic circuit with pressure showing on any of the gauges on the valves. Extreme caution should be used when performing all hydraulic tests. Ensure that there is no pressure on the system and the unit is properly blocked before proceeding with any work. Safety wear and eye protection must be worn to avoid serious injury. Follow all safety guidelines as listed in the operator's manual. Check that the operator, when placing the 3310 into transport position, is using the correct procedure. The proper sequence to follow when placing the drill into transport is to raise the openers with the 400 control box, move the tractor remote lever to neutral, turn off the power to the 400 control box, install the transport pins. Any deviation from this procedure could result in problems such as possible pressure increase in the inner wing cylinders causing the drill to start unfolding, or in rare situations using the tractor remote to raise the openers after the 400 control box is turned off could cause a pressure increase on the wing lift circuit causing the check valves to open in the seed opener hydraulic circuit. If the transport sequence is being followed properly, proceed to the next step. It is very important to gather the correct information from the drill operator. Are the openers dropping excessively during transport? When the unit is parked, how long does it take before the openers drop? If you can push one seed opener arm to the ground within 30 minutes after parking, proceed with the troubleshooting procedure to identify the leak or leaks in the system. Openers remaining up for greater than 30 minutes indicate a very small leak that may be very difficult to locate and will cause no operational problems. First, park the drill and shut off the main opener hydraulic lockout valve. If the unit is equipped with MRBs, leave the MRB valve open. Do the openers drop when the main shutoff valve is closed? If no, proceed to the valve isolation test. If yes, and the machine is equipped with MRBs, Raise the openers again, close the MRB shutoff valve, then let the drill sit again. Do the openers still drop? If yes, proceed to the opener cylinder leak test. If no, proceed to the valve isolation test. Place the drill in a clear area free of obstacles and people. Run the tractor for a few minutes until the hydraulic oil is at normal operating temperature. It is important to remember that in all the tests the model 400 control box is used to raise and lower the openers. For the ease of isolating cylinder leaks to a particular section, 
it is recommended to install section isolation ball valves as per TSB 1.10. Contact a Burgo dealer for the package available from Burgo. An infrared temperature gun will also be required to measure the subtle temperature changes caused by a leaking hydraulic cylinder. Follow these steps to locate a leaking seed opener cylinder. Raise and lower all of the openers several times. Leave the openers in the raised position and then close the section isolation ball valves. Give the drill a period of time for the openers to fall. Adding weight to an opener on each section can speed up the leak down process. The severity of the cylinder leak or leaks will vary with the length of time elapsed before the openers drop to the ground. Any section that contains one or more leaking cylinders will have all the cylinders drop. Open the isolation ball valve to the dropped section. If there is more than one section that has dropped, open the isolation ball valve to only one section at a time. Engage the opener remote in the up position with the Model 400 control box for up to 20 minutes. Determine the temperature differential of the base end of the cylinder compared to the rod end port for each cylinder in that section. It is critical to measure the temperature at the two specified locations on each cylinder. An infrared temperature gun is the recommended tool for this operation. It is important to know that a leaking seed opener cylinder will normally show an outlet temperature measured at the base end port higher than the inlet temperature measured at the rod end port. A temperature differential of less than 3 degrees Fahrenheit can indicate a slight seal bypass where a temperature differential of greater than 3 degrees Fahrenheit will indicate a more severe seal bypass. The more severe the seal bypass, the greater the temperature differential between the outlet and inlet ports. Mark the cylinders where the outlet temperature is greater than the inlet temperature. Cylinders showing a temperature differential of greater than 4 degrees Fahrenheit should be removed, inspected and repaired as required. If a cylinder is showing a temperature differential of 2 or 3 degrees Fahrenheit, it is inconclusive if there is an internal leak. Proceed to step 10. A lower temperature differential may indicate a small oil leak. A more involved check is required to determine if there is an actual leak in the cylinder. Open up the section isolation ball valve for the section that contains the cylinder being checked. Using the tractor hydraulics, lower this section of openers to the ground. Place the hydraulic system in float and make sure all of the gauges on the hydraulic blocks are at zero PSI. Do not proceed until all hydraulic pressure has been released. On the cylinder to be checked, remove the base end JIC fitting and install a number 6 JIC plug in the hose. Attach to the base end JIC fitting a 45 degree elbow to redirect any oil that may be bypassing the piston seal. Remove the rod end cylinder pin that attaches it to the arm. Using the tractor hydraulics, raise the drill openers. A small burst of oil will come out the 45 degree fitting when the rod is fully retracted. This is the oil trapped in the cylinder when it was fully retracted. Note that the rest of the openers in the section will raise. After the initial burst of oil, watch for any trickle of oil continuing to flow out of the 45 degree fitting. Any continuous flow of oil from the 45 elbow clearly indicates a piston seal bypass that needs to be repaired. If no oil is flowing, then there is no leak in the cylinder. Reinstall the cylinder onto the seed arm assembly. Ensure that the openers have been placed on the ground, the hydraulic remote has been placed in float, and all hydraulic pressure has been released prior to repair. After replacing or repairing the faulty cylinder or cylinders, repeat steps 1, 2, and 3 to check that there is no remaining leaking cylinders. It is possible to conduct the 3310 opener leak test without the installation of section 
isolation ball valves as per TSB 1.10. The procedure is much the same, but since specific sections have not been isolated, each cylinder on the drill must be checked for a temperature differential after step 5. Checking for leaking MRV cylinders is very similar to checking for seat opener cylinder leaks. One crucial difference between the MRB and seat opener circuits is that the MRB cylinders are inverted. Being that MRB cylinders are inverted, you can add a second lockout valve to the return side of the MRB circuit and effectively eliminate the possibility of the MRBs dropping due to a leaking cylinder. A second lockout valve on the MRB circuit is now standard. Please refer to the operator's manual for more detailed information on this feature. Follow these steps to locate a leaking MRB cylinder. Close the seat opener shutoff valve. Raise and lower all the MRBs a few times. Leave the MRBs in the raised position. Engage the MRBs remote in the up position with the Model 400 control box for up to 20 minutes. Determine the temperature differential of the base end of the cylinder compared to the rod end port for each cylinder in that section. It is critical to measure the temperature at the two specified locations on each cylinder. An infrared temperature gun is the recommended tool for this operation. It is important to know that a leaking MRB cylinder will normally show an outlet temperature measured at the rod end port higher than the inlet temperature measured at the base end port. A temperature differential of less than 3 degrees Fahrenheit can indicate a slight seal bypass where a temperature differential of greater than 3 degrees Fahrenheit will indicate a more severe seal bypass. The more severe the seal bypass, the greater the temperature differential between the outlet and inlet ports. Mark the cylinders where the outlet temperature is greater than the inlet temperature. Cylinders showing a temperature differential of greater than 4 degrees Fahrenheit should be removed, inspected and repaired as required. If a cylinder is showing a temperature differential of 2 or 3 degrees Fahrenheit, it is inconclusive if there is an internal leak. Proceed to step 10. A lower temperature differential may indicate a small oil leak. A more involved check is required to determine if there is an actual leak in the cylinder. Lower the MRB section to the ground. Place the hydraulic system in float and make sure all of the gauges on the hydraulic blocks are at zero PSI. Do not proceed until all hydraulic pressure has been released. Remove the base end JIC fitting and install a number 6 JIC plug in the hose. Attach to the base end fitting a 45 degree elbow to redirect any oil bypassing the piston seal. Remove the rod end cylinder attaching pin. Using the tractor hydraulics, lower the MRBs. A small burst of oil will come when the rod is fully retracted. This is the oil trapped in the cylinder when it was fully retracted. After the initial burst of oil, watch for any trickle of oil continuing to flow out of the 45 degree fitting. Any continuous flow of oil from the 45 elbow clearly indicates a piston seal bypass that needs to be repaired. If no oil is flowing, then there is no leak in the cylinder. Replace the cylinder onto the MRB assembly. Ensure that the openers have been placed on the ground the hydraulic remote has been placed in float and all hydraulic pressure has been released prior to repair. After replacing or repairing the faulty cylinder or cylinders, repeat steps 1, 2 and 3 to check that there is no remaining leaking cylinders. If the openers only drop when the main ball valves are open and do not drop when closed, there is most likely a check valve leaking. Ensure that all safety precautions are followed when conducting each test. Before working on the hydraulics, lower the openers to the ground, place the hydraulic system in float, and make sure all of the gauges on the hydraulic blocks are at zero PSI. Do not proceed until all hydraulic pressure has been released. Bypass the direction control inner wing down pressure valve with a set of hydraulic hoses. Once the bypass is complete, 
engage the openers into transport to see if they stay up. If they do, the direction control inner wing down pressure valve needs to be serviced or replaced. If the openers still fall, proceed to step two. Bypass the opener down pressure valve with a set of hydraulic hoses. Once the bypass is complete, engage the openers up into transport. Be careful to always engage the openers up when at full system pressure, since full system pressure down on the openers may damage components. If they stay up, the opener down pressure valve needs to be serviced or replaced. If the openers still fall, proceed to step 3. Bypass the MRB valve with hoses and see if the openers stay up. Once the bypass is complete, engage the openers into transport to see if they stay up. If they do, the MRB valve needs to be serviced or replaced. Remove the check valves of any leaking hydraulic block and inspect. Use the correct seal kits when replacing O-rings.